Like whatever was right there, it's it's dead now. It's it's gone. <laughs> I can balance really well. Okay, I can balance really well while putting my leg like this. Look, or I can balance really well while putting my leg like this. Look at my extreme flexibility. Or I can balance really well while, you know, holding my leg in this crazy position which requires a lot of extreme <laughs> athletic quality. That is incredible. Hello, my name is Rebecca. I am a Wushu athlete and I wanted to share three ways that Wushu blows my mind. I'm making this video for three reasons. The first is that I have been doing a lot of thinking and reflecting about what makes Wushu so magical for me and I wanted to share it with you guys. The second is that I think Wushu, especially for beginners, it can be difficult to tell what's good Wushu and what's not. Sometimes scores might not perfectly align with who you thought was the best athlete. Sometimes you might hear people people talking about, oh, I love this athlete or this style so much. And then you look at it and it's just kind of like, I, what's, what's everyone talking about? What's the big deal? Um, and then they try to explain it to you, but because it's so obvious to them why it's so good, they don't do a very good job explaining. And then it's kind of like a emperor's new clothes situation where you don't want to be the person who doesn't see the thing that everyone else sees. And it's just kind of awkward, but you just kind of don't still see it. When I first started Wushu, I didn't enjoy watching Wushu at all. I loved to practice and I loved to train, but I would look at Wushu videos and be like, Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm seeing. Uh, this is confusing. Over time, as I've continued to practice and train, I have definitely come to be able to appreciate and discern the quality of Wushu more. I've also received like a lot of help of people pointing out like, oh, look at this guy's feet, look at this guy's stances, look at these all of these different things um, to help me understand what is difficult, what is hard about Wushu, and then essentially love watching Wushu now. I watch it every day. Sometimes it just helps to have somebody who appreciates the thing point out things to appreciate to you so that you can appreciate them too. The third reason that I wanted to make this video is that I feel like Wushu lovers love to divide themselves on the difference between old school and new school Wushu. But I guess the more I personally watch Wushu, the more I realize that for me it's not about an era that the Wushu is from, but whether or not that athlete is demonstrating something interesting to look at. And so I wanted to share my perspective that doesn't necessarily take a side of old school versus new school, but rather argues for Wushu that demonstrates mind-blowing qualities. Of course, this is not an end-all list of things that makes Wushu great. If there are things that I'm missing, definitely leave me a comment below, especially if you have examples demonstrating the point that you're trying to make. I would be really curious to know what people think. For me, qualities that an athlete demonstrates is really core to Wushu. It's not so much about the movements themselves, but what can be concluded based on what was done and how it was done. I can't think of a better way to describe it than that scene in the movie Hero. So our protagonist, Jet Li, is 10 paces away from these books. He stomps the water cup into the air, does some wushu actions, catches the water cup, and then boom. Books fall apart, leaving the spectators awestruck. Basically, it's a proclamation that at 10 paces away, this guy is lethal. It's not about what he actually did, but the fact that you can't help but conclude that this guy should not be messed with. In Wushu the sport, it's not the point per se to convince people that you are lethal, but there are things that when athletes demonstrate them, they really do leave me in this awestruck state, um, and I want to share what those things are. All right, principle number one, that when it's demonstrated by a Wushu athlete, completely blows my mind, the combination of precision and power. Great example here is Woody's spear. You can see exactly in space where he's attacking. And then, because of the bend in the spear, you can see exactly how much power he's putting into each one of those stabs. Boom, 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 boom. I imagine that like he's puncturing bags of rice or balloons or something. Very dramatic, very clear, very precise and powerful. Another classic example for me is Shiming Hu, his straight sword. I love that you can see exactly where in space his sword is intending to go. And then boom, like whatever was right there, 
it's it's dead now it's it's gone <laughs> you can also hear the power and precision by the snap in the sword that noise that crispness does not happen by accident Obviously, I am biased here to highlight straight sword and spear athletes, partially because that's what I practice, um, but also because that's more of the style of the weapon. But I would also hesitantly argue that good Dao also has a lot of precision to it, though it may be more wild in style. None of their energy is wasted. Every movement is executed exactly as they intend to do, which shows a precision in itself. I am not a broadsword expert, so let me know in the comments below if I'm misinterpreting something here, or if you want to give me examples of wushu athletes that you love who aren't as precise, maybe a little bit more crazy, but you still really enjoy watching and still get that wushu feel from. To further illustrate this point, I wanted to compare two athletes doing a relatively similar straight sword combo, in that these are both very flowery, very fast movements with their swords. This athlete, Ma Young, this is actually one of my all-time favorite forms. Maybe I'll make a whole video on it some other time. But I love that you can see exactly where the sword is going. It is delicate yet powerful. It is very precise. And then compare it to this athlete here. This is Li Chi Jen, who, by the way, I'm not trying to disparage at all. This athlete is capable of things far beyond what I will be in my lifetime. Um, and I also really do enjoy watching this. But you can see here, it's not exactly clear where his sword is going. And then this movement here, it's like he's slashing, but he's only just kind of loosely gripping the sword rather than actually making a cut. But like I said, very advanced. Um, and I still really do enjoy watching this. But if it's a question of which blows my mind more, definitely the first athlete. On another note, I think that with weapons, power and precision can be perceived very visually. However, you can also perceive power and precision with sound. I love both watching and listening to this athlete. Her name is Wang Ping. All of her slaps, all of her slams, all of her hammer fists, so loud. Good sound doesn't happen by accident. You really need to be coordinating your power and your speed and your relaxedness and your firmness to make something really crisp and really loud. And so I love both listening to and watching athletes like this because it's really such a clear demonstration of power and precision. Principle number two that when a wushu athlete demonstrates this blows my mind is mastery of fundamental techniques. What do I mean by fundamental techniques here? Uh, I really want to distinguish between what the shape of a movement is and kind of the essence of that movement. A classic example is a hammer fist. For example, Gacha being the hammer fist is very tall, very upright, very fast, drops straight down. Um, as opposed to an athlete like Ding Wei, it's not fast in the same way, but he's so much, there's so much crashing down force. I always imagine that he's like, you know, leaping off a cliff as all of that's coming down. Compare that to another athlete, uh, Gang Xiaoling. Her hammer fist is a lot rounder in that she's turning her body into the movement. Again, none of these are wrong. It's not the shape of the thing that matters, but the fact that the athlete has picked some way that suits them, and then taking that technique to the extreme, the most of what it could possibly be. Another good example of the shape not defining the thing for me is Ma Bu. I love watching Wu Hong's Chang Chuan, though there is some potential here that he could get deducted for his mabu and that his feet are pointed outwards. Um, if you're a judge, let me know in the comments whether or not you would deduct this. But from my perspective, this combo still really blows my mind because it is so light yet so firm and the stances are seemingly so ingrained in his body. You can really tell that he's done this movement thousands of times and that casualness yet exactness is really a sign to me of mastery. Call me old-fashioned, but I think that there is a special magic that arises when you do a move a thousand, ten thousand times, each time trying to be a little bit higher, a little bit faster, a little bit more powerful, trying to make move a little bit more of what its ideal should be. And I think that that magic can really show when you can very quickly nail a move. It just screams, this is not my first time, I have done this before, <laughs> do not mess with me. Another way that you can show mastery is being able to do movements at an interesting rhythm. Like not only can I do these punches and these hammer fists this way, but I can do it while sprinting back and forth in kind of a syncopated rhythm. 
very difficult to do and you wouldn't be able to do that unless you have a lot of practice doing these movements. Something that I love about good wushu is how dense it is of things to master. Right, like at the highest level, a taolu, doing a whole form itself is a skill in itself. And then you break it down, like how do I make a section have good rhythm? You break down the section to a combo, like how do I make each step, each punch, each eye movement, each breath, something that is good or exciting. You take the big picture of what something can be and you break it down to as many smaller components. And when you see an athlete who has mastery at every single one of those levels, that is incredible. So yeah, thing that blows my mind when I see it in Wushu, mastery of fundamental techniques. A counterpoint for this is when I see movements from another discipline put into Wushu. For example, tricking, gymnastics, um, windmills, backflips, that type of thing. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with this. I had gymnastics moves in my form. I think when done well, it is still very impressive. It is still a great athletic feat. But the response that I had, especially when I was new to Wushu, was not one of like, oh, mind blown, but actually more of confusion. And that it's like, okay, here is the top level athlete. Here is like, you know, the world's fastest, most precise flowers and best basics. And now they're doing an intermediate level gymnastics skill. It was just a little bit confusing for me because it doesn't per se show mastery, nor is it a wushu fundamental. Again, nothing inherently bad about it, but if the question is like what blows my mind more, definitely high level wushu rather than intermediate level other disciplines. All right, third thing that a wushu athlete can demonstrate that blows my mind is extreme physical capabilities. Obviously, explosive power, speed, inherently interesting to watch. Another one is extreme flexibility and then power and strength in those super extreme positions. Not only can I do the splits or hold my legs in this crazy position, but I can very fluidly carry and move my body weight like this. Bananas. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong on this. I am not a track expert, but I've heard that one of the most difficult events in track is the 400 meter hurdles because that's right at the limit of how long a person can be sprinting, like around a minute or so. And it's also incredibly technical. So you're putting your body at like full force as long as you possibly can while having to do a very technical movement. And I think to myself, Oh, that's, that's just like doing a wushu form. So it absolutely blows my mind when I see people who at the end of a very difficult form are still kicking and still fighting. Another quality is balance. Though I can definitely appreciate a really good ko tui ping hung. For example, Geng Xiaoling, she is perfectly still. And then she contrasts it with super fast, super crazy movements, which I think is really interesting to watch. But that movement itself is just demonstrating like, okay, I can balance really well. Compare it to a different balance, like, okay, I can balance really well while putting my leg like this, look at my hip mobility. Or I can balance really well while putting my leg like this, look at my extreme flexibility. Or I can balance really well while, you know, holding my leg in this crazy position, which requires a lot of coordination and like hip control extreme <laughs> athletic qualities. I would argue the more dense a wushu form is, the more dense wushu is with those extreme qualities, the more interesting it is to watch. All right, that wraps up this video. The three things that, when demonstrated in wushu, blow my mind. One, power and precision. Two, mastery of fundamental techniques. And three, redonkulous athletic abilities. You can let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. Did I miss anything? Did I misinterpret some wushu? I'm really curious what you think. Going through the process of thinking of all of these things and watching all of these wushu videos was really fun. I honestly just recommend this to anybody who, if you're feeling like down or discouraged about something, like think, spend a lot of time thinking about the thing that you love and all of the reasons that you love that thing and I promise that you will feel better. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you guys next time.